Oh, well, welcome back, DIY car guys and car girls. I did a little short asking if you guys want to peer inside a uh, blow-through carburetor that's capable of a thousand horsepower plus. And here it is. We're going to take it apart. Uh, we'll explain. Well, I'll explain at least my remedial understanding of the differences between a blow-through carburetor compared to a NA carburetor. I do have a good bit of experience with uh, nitrous and NA um, tuning on these carburetors with gas and ethanol. I've done them both. I'm very familiar with that. I'm not really familiar with this. I might say things. I might be a little bit wrong. Cut me a little slack. But when this goes on the vehicle, uh, we will be tuning all this. And I'll go over everything in the future. Right now, I, I'm kind of dead in the water in the truck because I'm waiting on a hub for the ATI balancer. Um, it's a thicker hub, which gives a little more support um, to the um, snout there because we're going to be turning that belt. And I plan on turning this guy up. And that is the reason why I have a dual needle and seat uh, a blow through carburetor is because I'm going to be running ethanol, which automatically needs 30% more fuel. And I told Kevin, he's like, how much boost do you want to run? I was like, well, I plan on uh, doing 20 pounds of boost. He's like, well, you're probably going to need dual needles and seat. There's a couple things I can do to get more fuel in there, but I highly recommend that you do dual needle and seats. And you know what? I am not a builder. I am just a, a guy who knows how to tune carburetors. So whatever the builder says I need to get, I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna take all that knowledge and try to tune this guy properly for some street driving, snow prep use, stuff like that. So let's first go ahead, you know, I have two of the bolts off to make it easier to get in there. So let's first go ahead and we will pull this guy off. Now, where did I put my tool? Hope I can get to it, there's my fingers, there we go. So this is the front bolt, right? Let's take the front ball off of the blow through. So of course, fuel comes in here and you have not one, but you have two needles and seats. And that is to allow additional fuel because ethanol, automatically you need 30% more fuel. And then when you're doing boost, I'm not sure what the uh, horsepower is. It's right around 800, 900 horsepower where you have to have dual needles and seats when it comes to ethanol. And if you look at this, this is what's right here, right? And we have one that's in this guy right here. So fuel comes in this. You see this big old hole. You might think that's what's feeding your bowl, but it's not. This little guy comes down. And then when it comes down, this little guy, this little plunger comes down and allows fuel to come in through this small hole right here. So dual needle and seat, you have double the volume that you can feed your dual needle seat bowls too. So you got double the volume of fuel that you can potentially put in this guy to go into your motor. So that's the main reason for uh, dual needle and seat bowls. Additional flow, additional fuel. So let's take a look at this guy right here and we will compare it. This is the metering block. We're gonna compare this to this guy right here. And where in the world did that go? Here it is. All right, that's a little easier. We're going to get this guy off. And we'll compare. We've already compared the bowls. And this is the front of the carburetor. So let's put this guy up here. And let's first look at this side. Oh, sorry, this side right here on this guy right here. So, of course, you can see the spring is on this side on the NA carburetor, right? And that is because when you're at idle, this guy is closed, the power valve is closed. It is not allowing additional enrichment to go to these guys right here. These are restrictions right here. You can get different size restrictions depending on what you wanna do. I have a bunch of videos in this, guys. I got a whole bunch of videos and I'll show you the air fuel. So I'm giving a thumbs up saying, yep, it's good, it's good. So I'm gonna do a little second gear pull here to 7,000 RPM just to check out the air fuel. So here we go, I'm gonna start around 4,000, stab at it. And 12, 4, 12, 5, 13.0 on the high shift, fine. We are good to go, nothing wrong with that tune-up. Um, I'll put the links for those videos in the description below. I recommend you watch those just so you know when I talk about this, you can see the air fuel. I've done tuning videos. So that way you know I'm not just blowing smoke up your butts that I have done this, I have tested this, I have monkeyed around with it a lot. So I kind of have a little idea what I'm talking about here. 
So basically what that power valve does is when you're just cruising around on a NA uh, application or a draw, a draw through, not a blow through, this guy is closed when you're just kind of putting around. And then when you whack into it, there's a hole right here. And that vacuum is what's keeping this guy right here closed, right? The, but then when these guys open up, these blades, these blades right here, those blades open up, you now are not pulling all that vacuum through that hole, which means this guy is no longer closed. It's open, it's allowing fuel to come in into this so you have extra enrichment here, extra enrichment here, that then goes out to your boosters right here. And that is your wide open throttle um, enrichment. And the backside on this guy, I do not have a power valve, so we are just relying on the jetting of this. So that's how a NA1 works, right? That's how the NA works. Let's get this guy over here out the way. Now let's talk about differences in a metering block that you have a boost reference power valve. So let me go ahead and put this guy right here. So see this little check ball right here? So what happens on a blow through carburetor is you have your hat that sits right here and then boost comes in. So this pressurizes not only right here, but it also pressurizes the bowls inside there to your metering blocks, which forces to fuel in whenever boost starts to hit. So instead of, of you're letting that vacuum come in and it's closing the power valve and you're just drawing everything through, you now have positive pressure on the top which is where your extra enrichment needs to go. So on this particular carburetor, there's a bunch of different ways people build blow throughs. Uh, this one, that hole right here is blocked because once you have boost here, of course, it's gonna have boost coming in to that little hole, which is not gonna allow your power valve to open. So what these little nifty guys do is when it's pressurized, so pretend here, let me put this guy here for close up. So when this gets pressurized, it also pressurizes your bowl that sits right here. And then this little check ball right here and this side opens up and there's a little spring in here. So you screw this in to whatever boost you want it to open up to. I think Kevin said this is set to around five pounds. So it won't open up to around five pounds of boost, but you can adjust that. And that is just for the front. And you notice we have progressive linkage so you can rely there's a little bit of boost just on the front here, but then when you rack into it on the rear, you have another power valve in the rear, which is set up the exact same way as this one right here. So let's first take this guy off and we can see the difference in the enrichment channel. So automatically, if you look right here, you have an extra hole for enrichment at the top and you have these restrictions, which you can drill out to add even more enrichment. So you're kind of balancing out the jetting from in here, which feeds into the same channel, which comes out right here to your boosters as your main jets right here. So as boost builds, you're not only using your main jets, you're also using those restriction channels to smooth that transition, that whole curve out as boost comes in. That's the whole idea about the boost reference power valve. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys right there. So let's go ahead and put this guy in right here and we'll go to the back and you'll see how the back's just a little bit different than the front. And it's just because of the direction the fuel is gonna go in. So remember this guy goes right here. And we also have vent tubes. I don't have vent tubes on this. They will pressurize the bowls also. See how this feeds into here. That'll pressurize the bowl. It helps uh, boost the signal. So whenever I get the carb hat situated, Kevin is gonna make me the vent tubes. And those help the direct air, it'll, it'll sit in the passageway air and they will help pressurize your bowls, which then helps the signal in here. Because you're not just relying on carb signal drawing through, you're also relying on the signal of boost to open up your boost reference power valve. So let's now go to the rear real quick. All right, 
and you'll notice that we have jet extensions and of course that is when you're going forward the fuel is going to run air to the back so this puts it in the path of the fuel because you don't want to suck in the air air is not good you want to all, always make sure that that path of fuel for these guys to draw fuel into your boosters right here at wide open throttle that these guys are right in the fuel <clears throat> so of course the back you can see it's different just because of that right there but it's all pretty much the same so if i were to pull this out this guy out right here you'll see that it's pretty much the exact same deal just has an extension that keeps it in the fuel so you can see right here we have the restrictions we have these open ones right here that allows additional enrichment and like I said before you have your jets right here which are gonna put fuel as boost builds, it's gonna push fuel in here, out your boosters right here. These are annular boosters. And it, it's also gonna pressurize and open this check ball that is in here, which is going to add extra enrichment right here. So in a nutshell, that is pretty much the whole premise of a blow through carburetor. Now I'm, I'm probably getting, there's probably a lot of little things that I don't know about uh, you know, you do have restrictions in here and these restrictions adjust your curve. Then you have, of course, your air bleeds up here, which a lot of this has to do, these, these ones right here are more for your low speed, just cruising, and these are your high speed. So the smaller this hole is, the less air that it's gonna force in, and it's gonna force in more fuel. So that's how those work. Now, I'm not sure how that's gonna change the tune up when you're doing a blow through, we're going to have to figure that out. Like I said, I've never tuned a blow through, but it's going to be fun to learn how to do that. And you notice in the metering um, plate right here, remember this hole right here is blocked off now. That normally allows this guy to pull vacuum through. That is now gone because we are not relying on vacuum to uh, control your enrichment. We're now using, like I said before, boost with this boost reference power valve right here so in a nutshell you know what that's pretty much it now there's a lot of things i didn't cover like i'm not a builder remember guys i'm not a builder uh th these patches ways everything has to be a certain size that's where the smart guys come into play because they need to know how all that works i don't know don't know how that works but it's very important that all those passageways are the correct size, the channels in here. And you notice one thing too is, um, this is where he probably drilled the larger passageways for the ethanol that go down in here. You have to drill this hole right here and there's another one drills right down in here into the main well, which fits right in there. See, he also put glue in here because when that's pressurized, the normal, um, you know, little, um, there's a pressed in like seat right here it will actually leak fuel out of that. So when it's pressurized, he put glue in there or some type of adhesive that makes sure when it's pressurized that no fuel comes flying out the top right there. So that's also an important little modification. Now, if you wanna know more about tuning a carburetor in a, or what all, everything does, this isn't that video. I just wanna show you guys, have a peek inside a, a thousand horsepower capable blow through carburetor, but I have lots of videos. I got links in the description. Like I said, I'll show you guys, I show the air fuel, I take the vehicle out for a ride, I change things, and you see the air fuel change. There's not too many people who actually do that on YouTube. I actually do that. A lot of people just talk about it and don't show you. I talk about it and I show you. This video isn't for that because, of course, I can't put this on my vehicle and start tuning it until I get all the parts in, everything set up the way I want. But hopefully, this video has been entertaining or some type of eye-opening experience for you guys. This is how simple carburetors are but they're simple and they're not simple at the same time. There's a lot of stuff that people have, a lot of research people have gone and made sure all those passages ways, everything is set up correctly to work um, with whatever application you have. Now, am I gonna be able to get it tuned? I think I am, I think I, I, think I am. Um, like I said, I'm no stranger to carburetors. Um, I know a lot of people say you should have went fuel injection that's just not me. I'm not a fuel injection channel. I do carburetors because I think they're awesome. 
They're a very simple device, but the people who actually made these were geniuses to make this whole apparatus work right here. So don't forget to subscribe. I'll be having more updates in the truck as I get parts in. And I hope you like this video. Until next time, peace.